Ladies and gents, here is a post-release review of Horizon Zero Dawn. For those of you that have not played this game yet, I urge you to do so as this game is another Sony exclusive gem, joining top tier Sony greats like Uncharted and Last of Us. This game is probably going to be my game of the year, and my next vi set of videos is going to be a critical analysis on it for avid and excited fans about this new franchise. Guerrilla Games, the team behind this game, was founded back in 2000. The Amsterdam studio has been committed to the Killzone franchise for quite some time now, releasing shooters that looked great but just lacked what the other leading shooters in the industry provided. They unveiled another IP back at E3 2015, which did turn lots of heads and sparked lots of interest, the only question that remained was whether they will pull it off after release. And they have, I mean I got completely caught off guard with this gem of a game. I mean I was so impressed with how much of a great job this studio did, I was just wondering whether it was really them that made it. Anyways, let's take a look. Quick snapshot. The game is set in a post-apocalyptic world, but like none other we have seen before. It is set in a point in time after a technologically advanced human civilization goes missing following a catastrophic event. You learn that the people of the past built revolutionary machines to carry out a wide array of functions. Some of the machines would be designed like some mammals and dinosaurs as part of a competitive tech arms race among several competing corporations, all striving to make the best weapons of war. The catastrophic event has left humankind reduced to something akin to the tribal ages, and it has left behind an ecosystem of machines that are dinosaur and mammalian type robots that are increasingly getting hostile towards humans. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the event in this video, as that will be a spoiler, but from a story point of view it's pretty cool. You play as Aloy, who has been an outcast of her native tribe from a very small age. She's taken into the care of Rost, another outcast from the trip who ends up being her father figure. During Aloy's childhood, she stumbles across a piece of tech from the old civilization that helps her explore the world, enhancing her perception of it. Aloy is a headstrong, curious and badass heroine whose determination and insistence on finding the answer to our burning questions turns into a journey of unraveling the mysteries of the world and what happened. Which was beautifully set up and written. I mean, the game has a well written and structured story filled with lots of lore, nearly all of it being really interesting and fun to absorb. You really do get to learn about the politics, history and story of each tribe, faction or city you come across. The characters were designed well in the game and I found myself picking more optional dialogues where they would explain more about themselves, where they are from or who they are. The game is good at making you connect and care about other characters in the game and you spend enough time with them to feel like you are really in a world with really solidly put together characters and people. The story also has a level of originality to it that catches you off guard when you realise that the typical tropes, cliches and predictable plot moments are not really big issues here. I mean, I, I love that towards the end of the game I was getting closer and closer to the truth with audio logs, holograms and cutscenes all mixing together. And the game story builds up to the reveal bit by bit and when the plot finally connected up all the dots I just got tingles. I mean, I, I love the fact that I did not foresee that this is what happened and then it just left me with a, um, a feeling of, ah, of course, so that explains it. Like, you know, that, I, th I think that was really cool. And I mean, in, at, at a glance, the story may feel familiar, but when you get to the end, you're just like, ah, no way. But I mean, at the same time, you get to appreciate the awesomeness upon the reveal as well. The game also shows the conflicts and harmony between science, faith and religion, but not in a one-sided argument kind of way. It also felt like it was an invitation for the player to think on it and draw parallels to our own world. It also shows how strong humanity's survival instincts can really be in order to ensure the continued existence of the human race. Moving on to combat.
combat. The combat in this game is probably one of the best ones I've ever come across so far. I mean, this is the breadwinner of the game. There are 26 different species of robots to go up against, with each one requiring you to learn what its weaknesses are, which you can visually see upon doing a quick scan, but by the way, there's no tutorials for them, you just have to learn and adapt, which gives the combat a spontaneous and pleasant level of intensity. It gives a Dark Souls feel to it, but I mean, some of the account, but bear in mind the punishments are not as harsh as um, Dark Souls. In the first moments of the game, you rely on a basic bow and arrow to take down foes, coupled with your dodging ability, a combat roll to avoid random things like tail swipes and deadly pounces. Dodge too early, the foe will readjust and ensure you look silly trying to get away with blindly spamming the button. As you progress through the game, you end up learning strategies and being methodical in your engagements with the enemies. The game's encounters can be quite hard and tricky at times, but the game is not excessively hard. I would say that it's pitched really well, in fact once you learn how to take out the foes, it becomes routine and less of a challenge but you still need to be on your toes. And, it, and by the way, even when you get used to it, it's always fun to do it. I mean, I recall the first time I was struggling with the Stormbird, which is one of the toughest aerial uh, foes you can go against in the game. And the main thing that kind of bugged me was that it takes you like um, quite a couple, well, quite a quite a fair amount of time to get its health low. And when I would do, it would just do this one tail swipe, that uh, you know it, its tail was really far reaching, and uh, <laughs> it took me out in like one hit. So what was the solution? I uh, used my rope caster more, and um, I'm you can actually blow off the tail if you keep destroying it enough. So therefore, it won't tail swipe you. But just knowing that there's a little things like that that you can mix up and, and try and uh, make the encounter easier and, and more, tip more to your favor. You will then get the opportunity to get more weapons and equipment at your disposal, with the additions of being able to craft different ammo types, allowing you to tool up correctly for an encounter. You can also craft it on the fly, which helps keep the momentum of the combat going. Different equipment and ammo types allow you to do crowd control or give foes damage over time effects, so you can really strategize here. For example, you can get tear arrows that, as its name suggests, tears off the armor and attachments of enemies, exposing them to more weaknesses. In fact, if you're really clever enough, you can pick up the guns you just tear off with your tear ammo and then use it against the machines themselves. The combat never gets boring, and going against the many different types of robots is fun. When you are doing a quest or are running around long distances, you don't mind fighting them because the combat is just fucking great. I mean, especially when you see something you haven't fought or seen before. Hunting in the game kind of gave me a Hemingway vibe to it, as you constantly feel like you are trying to directly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the robotic behemoths. In fact, you have quests making you collect trophies to do exactly that. The game encourages a sort of huntsman sports attitude towards killing the behemoths roaming around the world. The combat always keeps you on your toes and makes all the grindy bits of the game not feel as monoton monotonous given how fun the combat is. I mean, the aiming mechanic in aim assist was made so well that you feel like a sharp shot, even though that's far from the truth. Moving on to gameplay, a good chunk of the gameplay incorporates fun aspects from other good open world games like Far Cry, you know, it's just kind of fusing all the all the good stuff that actually works uh, and, and putting it into here with, with more polish. I mean, in terms of side quests and activities, there are zones to clear, tall, long, moving, long necks you must find a way to climb up to the top of, which will unlock stuff on your map when you do camps to clear and plenty of other fine side quests and errands to do. You get a piece of equipment that allows you to override certain enemies, turning them into allies or mounts. You can expand the number of species you can override by finding secret lo locations called cauldrons, which are underground facilities where the machines are mass produced. Side quests varied in quality, most were pretty good, only a few weren't but the best side quest was the Hunter's Lodge one, a chain of side quests that had a nice story and was made so conscientiously that it almost felt like it was a main story quest in terms of quality. It really felt like you were trying to prove yourself slash earn your stripes to get into the closed off Huntsman society in the game. The side quest in question, the side quest in question involved multiple characters and scenes with promise of big reward upon completion giving you a huge incentive to complete it. 
and the reward is you get tons of weapons uh, that are among the best you can get in the game. But anyways, to do so you have to prove yourself by completing hunting trials around the world. Although you'll be crafting lots of things in your playthrough, the game's resources are plentiful including the loot. This makes searching every box, corner, room and defeated mobs a compulsive but satisfying thing to do. The game mechanically is smooth and the graphics are visually stunning, maintaining its smoothness even at 30 frames per second chaotic moments. When you blow the parts of robots or cause lots of damage, you see really cool and bedazzling particle effects. Particle effects. It is quite clear that Gorilla are truly pushing and utilising the most of Sony's console horsepower to give us a really visually detailed game. I mean seriously, this is one of the prettiest game of the year so far. The open world is designed meticulously with a good range of vistas to traverse. One minute you're in a snowy mountain, desert, canyon, a city or metropolis, forest or even a swampy area. I mean, it's just such a variety of areas that you'll be moving through. The sheer scale and diversity of environments is a true testament to solid game design. My other favourite thing was the music and the sound of the game. Good use of sound and music always amplifies or enhances what's going on in the screen. The sounds of this game are amazing. Playing it with 7.1 headphones, you truly hear the detailed ambient sounds, distant and trembling thuds of the long necks, and terrifying mechanical roars of giant robot dinos that catch you trying to run past. Sound was made so well that the audio immersiveness felt like it was achieved effortlessly. The music is mostly a mix of drums, percussions and string instruments. The music is also accompanied by some really cool vocals by Julie Elvin. And if you like the soundtrack of the game, it's all on there on Spotify for you to save, enjoy and add to your playlist. It truly complements the story and is weaved perfectly with what is going on in the screen. I mean, just hear what is pumped into your speakers when you decide to bravely engage a Stormbird or a Thunderjaw. Conclusion, Horizon is a game that is unique, visually stunning, has an unrivaled combat system, impeccable design and well made story that will keep you well entertained, making you think and obsess about the game after you complete it. It is another welcome addition to the top tier PlayStation exclusive and I am thankful to Guerrilla Games to have not only found their voice slash supreme franchise but to have also made a beautifully crafted game for us gamers to enjoy. The franchise is a success, but the true challenge will be retaining the success and longevity of the franchise. Final verdict, 10 out of 10.